Hello and welcome. It's Jennifer and Happy New Year to you all. Today I'm sharing with you six favorite fun fold card designs. These are designs that you can do with dies that you have on hand. There's no need for any specialty dies. I feel fun folds is the best way to kind of step up your card and offer something special to the recipient. Now, I will be demonstrating these six different fun fold card designs, but I'll also link to videos that show them more in depth and additional ideas, so you can try them with whatever you have on hand. For all of today's cards, I took a handful of products that I really wanted to try, and I figured out how to use them with these different techniques. I'm really hoping it inspires you. Let's start with one of the simplest and most popular fun fold card designs, and that is an easel card. Later, we'll step it up and do things a little more creative. Easel cards are very simple to do and work with a variety of products. Today, we'll make this card, and I'll show you how to use background dies with it, but still be able to create that fold on the front. For this card, I will be using the Spellbinder Small Die of the Month for January 2022. Now, I plan to be using more of these Spellbinders clubs throughout this year because I really like the designs and the amazing value you get with it. I'm using several different Spellbinders clubs in today's video, and at the end, if you stay tuned, I'll talk about why I like the clubs because I think they're definitely worth the investment. But right now, I'll be using this background die, which cuts a piece that is four by five and a quarter inches. So I'm starting with a piece of white cardstock that is the same, and I'm cutting that in half. When you do an easel card, there's a score right along the halfway point. And if you're layering a lot of background die cuts together, it's better to cut right across the center and then assemble it on a scored card, which you'll see in a moment. Just stick with me. Over on the left, I have die cut the background from white cardstock and from Lawn Fawn Fog cardstock. That's a light gray cardstock that I think is really beautiful. And I'm gluing those die cut pieces together onto our white rectangles. And I'm alternating the pieces between white and the light gray. I love that this background die cuts up those pieces so you can patch together different colors. Again, those two white rectangles started as a five and a quarter by four inch piece, but I just cut it in half right down the center, which will help with our easel card design. So I'm gluing these pieces down, alternating between the gray and the white. Since I had pieces left over, I went ahead and assembled them on another piece of cardstock that is four by five and a quarter inches, but not cut in half. That'll be just a regular card. I don't want those pieces to go to waste. It's just a bonus, and I'll show you that in a moment. Now we have these openings for these small hearts, and I thought I would do an inlay technique, adding those gray and white heart die cuts. After gluing those down, I decided it'd be fun if they had some dimension, so I die cut some more so I could have a little bit more dimension behind the small heart die cut pieces. You can definitely skip that, but I love the look. So here are the two backgrounds I have, one that's a whole background and one that's cut in half. The whole background I'll set aside and come back to later. Let's work with the one that's cut in half. This will be our easel card. Now it's time to create the heart element that kind of folds up when you do the easel card design. Now all of the die cuts on there for the heart itself are included in that Spellbinders Club of the Month that I showed you earlier. So I cut the solid heart from white cardstock. And then I cut the intricate heart from Concord and Ninth Mushroom cardstock, which is a dark gray. And I glued that on top. Then I added the tiny little flowers using some plum color cardstocks that I found in my scrap drawer. I'm actually creating two of these layered hearts at once. One will go on our easel card and one will go on our bonus card. I will tell you about those hello die cuts in a moment. But keep in mind here you could use any die cut that you want. It could be a heart, a circle, a flower, anything you want. Now let's create the easel note card. I'm starting with the piece of cardstock that is 11 inches wide by four and a quarter inches and I scored it right in the center at five and a half. That's how I create a top folding note card. But to make it an easel card, I also score at two and three quarter inches from one end. Then we will reinforce that with our bone folder to make sure we have a nice score line. Easel cards are very easy to create. And again, I will put a link up here to other videos showing ways to create them. 
Okay, now we have the two halves of our background. I'm using some liquid adhesive on the back of the bottom piece, and I'm gluing that below the score line on the front of our easel card. Then the top piece I'll glue above the score line on our easel card, making sure they meet up in the center. So this shows why we cut that layered background right across the center. That is so that it folds easily across the center on our easel card. It would have been hard to score through many layers on the front to get that nice fold, but by doing the cut on the front pieces, it really folds nicely. To add the heart to the center, I'm putting glue right in the heart area, but below that fold line. So you can see the adhesives just towards that bottom of the heart opening. I'll take our layered assembled heart and press that into place. So it's really only glued to the bottom half of the card. That way it can fold into an easel design. So let's look at the completed card. I have a tailored expression envelope that matches perfectly. And when you open this card, it will display as an easel card. I put a little sentiment in there and the easel card kind of sits up against it. So it stands on display nicely and there's plenty of room to write your personal sentiment underneath it. That little sentiment strip on the inside is from a Simon Says Stamp pre-printed sentiment, but you could stamp one and add it there very easily. Here you can see how the background easily folds because we put that cut along the center on the background. Also, you can see on the layered heart, I used gray, white, and plum colors of cardstock. And to the center of the flowers, I added some Trinity Stamps dewdrops, which are nice for just adding a little bit of dimension and shine. The hello dies, I'll show you that in a moment. You can also see the layered hearts that I added in the background using that Spellbinders die. I love how it adds some interest, but also allows you to create that layered heart in the center, which we'll use a few times in this video. Now remember how earlier I said I was creating a bonus card that was just a flat card? Here it is, it looks very much the same, but instead of having the easel card design, it's just a basic folded card. Now for the sentiment on the inside of our card, where we have that little stopper for the easel, I use some Simon Says Stamp reverse pre-printed sentiment strips. That is a great way to add a quick sentiment to a card, and it allows your easel card to stand up easily because we added it on the inside. Now for the hello dies, I use the Spellbinders mix and match sentiment dies. I would show you all the dies, but I have them mixed up with others that I'm using. I like this die set because there are many sentiments you can create from it, and it includes the words and the shadow dies together. I'll be using those throughout this video. And just a heads up, these will be on my favorites list for 2021. Okay, let's move on to our next fun fold card design. This is a gatefold card where the elements on the front split and go in different directions. This is great when you have multiple die cuts that you want to add to the front. Hearts work perfect for this. This is a mini slimline card, but you could do it with whatever card size you want. The overall card size of this will be three and a half by six and a quarter inches. Here's a look at the completed card so you can see the direction we're headed. Again, this would work with circle die cuts, flowers, absolutely any smaller die cuts such as these hearts. Okay, so let's start out by doing the card base itself. This is just a mini slimline gatefold card. This is seven inches by six and a quarter inches tall. And I am doing two score lines. These will be at one and three quarter inches from each end. I then can fold the two flaps in and they will meet in the center, forming a gatefold card. I also wanted to cut a light blue piece of cardstock to add to the front and use an embossing folder on that. I'm using the new Spellbinders January 2022 embossing folder of the month. They have added to their clubs an embossing folder option, and I like that these are large embossing folders. I believe this is five and a half by eight and a half, so you can use it on a lot of different card sizes. I just cut a piece that was three and three quarter inches by six, and I'm cutting that in half down the center. That way I can glue the two halves to the two front panels of our gatefold card. Off screen, I assembled three hearts that are all the same. I used colorful cardstock and the dies that I used on my last card. This time I didn't use a background die, I just used the heart in the center along with the little flowers to kind of accent it. 
To add my first heart, I'm putting adhesive only on the back left side of the heart, and I'm gluing that on the bottom so that it glues just to that left hand flap of the gatefold card. I will do the same with the heart on the top. I'm doing the top and the bottom first so that I can get things evenly spaced and easily add the third heart centered up in the middle. Now for that third heart, I'm putting glue on the back right hand side so that I can glue it on the right hand flap of our gatefold card. This way, two hearts open up to the left and one opens up to the right, which is just something fun and unusual. You could have them all on the left if you prefer. Okay, now for a sentiment, I use the Just a Note from the Spellbinders Just a Tweet die set. I don't have the die set to show you because I'm using it for a bunch of different projects, so it's all broken up. But I like the style of the Just a Note in this, just like I like the other sentiments I used on the other card, and I'll use again later in this video. I thought the Just a Note worked great for the three hearts on this. So here's a closer look. You can see I cut the words Just a Note from black cardstock and glued it onto white shadow die cuts. I like that that die set includes the shadows for the words. I also added little Trinity Stamps dewdrops to the center of the flowers for a little bit of sparkle. So this is another fun fold, very easy to do, and you can use with a variety of products. And it's a great way to step your card up to make it a little extra special. And again, I will link to a video up here on the top right where I share a variation of this technique so you can look for more ideas to try. Okay, our next fun fold card idea here is another gate fold, but this time the elements on the front split, and when you open it up, you get this really cool look. It looks great on display. This works very well with symmetrical die cuts such as hearts, circles, rectangles, stars, uh, squares, anything like that. Here's a look at the completed card. I love how it kind of pops up at you when you take it out of the envelope. And when you pull the two halves apart, it just gives this great display. For this, I used the Spellbinders January 2022 Stamp and Die of the Month Club. This is a four by six stamp set and coordinating dies, and all of it lines up and is the same sizing as the other products I've used today. So again, you can mix and match. Off screen, I stamped, colored, and die cut six hearts, and I did a bunch of different colors, so I kind of had a rainbow of flowers. I am now cutting all six of those hearts in half, right down the center. This is where it's handy to use a die cut that is symmetrical, such as a heart. Now you could fold these hearts instead of cutting them, but you'll see later that the card folds much better if you do cut each of these down the center. To make it look like these hearts had a mat on them, I just put some color on the outside edge of the stamping so it looks like it's matted on a colored cardstock, but these are all one single die cut thick. As we did with our other example for gatefold card, I have a piece of cardstock that is seven by six and a quarter, and I'm scoring it twice, one and three quarter inches from each end. So this when folded will be a mini slimline card that is three and a half by six and a quarter inches. Now, when you fold those two flaps together, they meet nicely in the middle. I did decide to have a little bit of a gap there in the middle. I wanted to have a little gap instead of meeting right at the center. So I'm just cutting a tiny bit off of each side. So I'm cutting about an eighth of an inch off. So you can see there's a little less than a quarter inch gap. Now I have six plain white heart die cuts and I'm scoring them right down the middle. And then I'll fold along those score lines. So I have six folded hearts. I will then take our stamped and colored heart halves up there and glue them onto the folded hearts. Now the reason I cut those stamped hearts in half is so that these hearts fold easier. If I glued two solid hearts together and tried to fold it in the middle, it wouldn't fold very easy. But by having the stamped heart die cut on the front cut in half, it really folds so much better. This is kind of like what we did on our easel card earlier. We cut the background in half so that the easel fold would fold nicely. Okay, now we can add our hearts to the gatefold. I start with one heart and I put adhesive on half of the back of it and I tuck it under the left flap of our gatefold card and push it right up against the edge of that flap. So our heart is not glued to the front of the card, only the inside flaps. Now I'll do the other half of this heart. So I've got this other heart here with a fold on it, put adhesive on the back half of it, 
tuck this under the right flap of the card. And I'm just wiggling it until I'm sure that the hearts meet nicely in the middle when the card is closed. So again, it's not glued to the front of the card, just the inside. So there you can see how it looks when you open it. And when you close, they line up. I will do the same thing with the other hearts. So we have three hearts down the center. And when you open it up, you see six hearts. Now remember there is a little bit of a gap in the front of this gatefold so that we had room to add these hearts to it. But that little gap allows you to see in the inside a little bit and I didn't want you to see the personal message on the inside when the card was closed. So I actually created a little mini note card to put on the inside. So I cut a piece of white cardstock that is three and a quarter by six and a half inches and I scored a quarter of an inch from one end. There are many ways you can do this, but this is what made the most sense to me at the moment. I put adhesive on that flap and added it to the inside of our gatefold card. Now, when you lift this, you have a place for your personal message. I wanted that to be white also, so I took another piece of white cardstock that is three and a quarter inches wide, glued that to the inside, and now we have a finished look. The reason I didn't put a piece of folded cardstock in there is because I didn't have cardstock that wide because this is a mini slimline card. So I had to piece two pieces together. But now I have a little white card on the inside to write my personal message. For a sentiment, I used a Simon Says Stamp pre-printed reverse sentiment strip and I'm putting glue on the back left of it so it's glued to the left-hand side of our gatefold card here. So it'll kind of go over to the left as you open it. So here's a look at the completed card. I love how this stands on display. And when it opens up, look at all those hearts. And then you have the element in the middle that flips open for your personal message. I think this is definitely a fun card to make. You could make it simpler by having one heart that splits apart in the center instead of the three. But I love the look of all of the elements on this mini slimline size. Okay, let's try another fun fold card design. And this one is a basic Z fold card design. I thought I'd do a mini slimline size once again because it works really well for the three hearts. So you can take any die cut and do three of them and it usually will fit on a mini slimline or full slimline version. So this one you just pull open and it has that fun kind of Z fold and there are hearts on the inside where you can write your personal message. The overall size of this completed card is three and a half by six and a quarter inches. I love this size and I will link to my source for mini slimline envelopes below. And like an A2 or regular slimline card, this will not require extra postage unless it's bulky. Okay, for the heart on this, I used the Spellbinders January 2022 large die of the month. Earlier, I used the small. This one creates a really fun pocket card, which I'll show you later in this video. But for this card, I am using the heart dies that you see over on the right, along with a few extra little flower and leaf die cuts. I assembled three hearts off screen. Again, it's super easy to do. You just cut scraps of colorful cardstock and arrange them together with some liquid adhesive. I layered my die cuts for dimension. I always do that, but you definitely could keep it more flat if you prefer. So I have three hearts here, one that has pink flowers, one that has peach, and one that has purple. So now let's create the Z fold card feature. Again, I'm starting with a piece of cardstock that is seven inches wide by six and a quarter inches tall. This time I'm scoring in two places. One is at three and a half, which is right down the center. Then the other score line will be at one and three quarter inches. This will allow us to create a Z fold card easily. There are millions of ways to do Z fold cards and I've done many videos showing them. I will link to a couple up here on the top right, but this is a fun way to just create interesting folds, great for scenes, and really works with a variety of products. Now in this case, I just have the three hearts once again, because I really like the style of these three hearts going down the mini slimline card. In this case, I'm putting liquid adhesive only on the back left-hand side of each heart. Now there are many ways you can add a personal sentiment to the inside of this. You could create a little mini card on the inside, but what I thought I would do is add three white hearts on the inside. Now I want them to line up with the hearts on the front. So I'm putting adhesive on the back of a white heart. Then I kind of fold open my card here. So I'm just folding this open, laying the heart on top of the bottom one, lining it up, but the adhesive is facing the camera. 
I then close the card onto that, which grabs that heart. And now this white heart is glued to the inside of the card and it's lined up with the heart on the front. So when the card is closed, you don't see it. I'll do this for the other two hearts also. So my plan is that there are three hearts on the inside. On the top one, I could put Dear Sally Sue. On the middle one, I can say Sending You Lots of Love or Thinking of You. And on the bottom heart, I can put Love from Jennifer. Now, again, you could add your personal sentiment in here however you want. You could do a folded note card. You can add another flap. But I think this is a fun alternative. I wanted to add three small sentiments to the hearts, and so I use the Simon Says Stamp Tiny Word Stamp Set. It's an old favorite of mine. I like these because you can do tiny little sentiment strips that don't cover up much of what you've created. So I did three different sentiments in black cardstock, white heat embossed the sentiments, and added it to the three hearts. I did also add yellow Trinity Stamps dewdrops to the flower centers for a bit of shine. So when you open this, you have those white hearts behind it where you can write your little message. And I just think this is a fun card design and it really stands nicely to on display. Something very unique and just a fun alternative to a basic folded card. Okay, another of my favorite fun fold card designs is to do a hinge for a die cut on the front of your card. In this example, I did three hearts with hinges. So they all flip up for a message underneath. Now here's a look at the completed card. It's a mini slimline again, three and a half by six and a quarter. Each of the hearts flips up so you can write something underneath each. You could put this on a regular note card. I just put mine on a flat panel, but it's totally up to you. You could use a variety of dies to create those hinge die cuts, but I decided to use my Spellbinders January 2022 Glimmer of the Month Club. On the right hand side are hot foil plates. On the left hand side are dies that all come together. There are some sentiment hot foil plates here. One says, with all my heart. One says, love enclosed. I really like this one that has hot foil plate with the floral image. And there is a die included that will cut that out, along with other dies that create little floral die cuts. Now, you could use this alone, or you can use it with the other clubs I'm showing you today because they all mix and match so well. To do the foiling of this heart, I'm using my Spellbinders Glimmer Foil Machine. If you want to see this process up close, I will link to a video that shows it in great detail. I'm gonna do it pretty quickly today. I've allowed my machine to warm up so it's ready to foil. I have chosen three different colors of Glimmer Hot Foil. This is the type of foil that is meant to use with a Glimmer machine with hot foil plates, and it foils beautifully. The process that I prefer to do when hot foiling is to tape my hot foil plate down to my cardstock with the pretty side facing down. I then slide underneath that my hot foil with the pretty side facing up. That way the pretty side of the hot foil plate touches the pretty side of the foil. I will then flip this over and make sure that the back of the hot foil plate touches the hot portion of the glimmer machine. I put my two plates on top, push the timer button, and when the timer stops flashing, I can take out that platform and the plates and take it over to my platinum die cut machine. I will run those back and forth slowly through my platinum die cut machine, and that will apply the pressure. So between the heat and the pressure, we'll get a beautiful transfer of foil using that hot foil plate. Now in my example here, I used blue foil and white cardstock. I did end up changing my mind and did the blue foil on blue cardstock. And I also did pink on pink cardstock and purple on purple cardstock. I know hot foiling can be intimidating, but I promise you it's super easy to do and very addictive. And I think more and more companies are coming out with hot foil plate options. But this card design could definitely be done with die cuts alone. So now I'm using the heart die that's included in that Glimmer Club of the Month set to cut that out. So now I have my three foiled hearts. I did cut additional white hearts. This will help me to create the hinge behind each of these. I also have pieces of scrap acetate that I cut from packaging. They're about a quarter inch wide and you wanna cut them to be about an inch and a half. And all I'm doing is folding it in half. So I folded one of those pieces in half and then just pressed it with my bone folder. So it's kind of hard to see here, but I have these little V's or these little hinges that are made out of clear acetate. You could use cardstock for this, but the acetate holds up really well 
and most of us have it on hand, left over for, from some sort of packaging. So I created several of those hinges. You need two for each of the hearts. Again, I just cut a thin strip, fold it in half, use my bone folder to reinforce that fold line, and we have our little hinges. Okay, let's start with our first heart. I'm taking two extra white, white heart die cuts, and I'm just cutting a little bit off the top. You could skip this if you want, but it helps to hide the hinge. So I'm just cutting a little bit off the top of the heart. Now I'm taking the hinge and I'm gluing it right onto the white hearts right at the top. The adhesive that I prefer to use for this is a strong double-sided adhesive, but you could try whatever you have on hand. I'm gluing one flap of the hinge right at the top of one of the white hearts. So that fold line on the hinge is right at the top where we cut off that heart. So you can see the other flap is hanging off of it. And I'll do the same thing with another hinge on the right-hand side of the heart. Now, if you have a circle shape instead, you could do one hinge at the top, but for a heart, I felt like two worked best. For a square and rectangle, that would probably be the case also. I will link to a video where I show more hinged element designs here at the top right to check out. Okay, now we need to add the other white heart to the other sides of the hinge flaps. So I'm just lining it up on top of the other, folding the flap of the hinge down and putting a piece of tape, and then I'll do the same thing on the other side. So basically we have this little mini heart card. Don't worry that you can see the flaps. We'll glue our decorative glimmer heart on top of it and no one will ever see it. There are many ways you can create a hinge on top of a die cut like this, but I do find that this works the best and holds up the best. On my particular card, I'm creating three small hinged elements, but you could create one large one with a large heart or a large rectangle. And in that video that I linked to up here on the top right, I show just that, where the entire card is a hinged element on the front. I thought it'd be fun to do three hinged elements for this particular card. Before we add them to the card, I wanted to use the embossing folder on the background of the card. This piece is cut to three and a quarter by six inches. And I'm again using the Spellbinders uh, embossing folder of the month club for January, 2022. It's that beautiful heart pattern. I love that it's big enough to use with a variety of card sizes. So I have a card that I made from Simon Says Stamp Fog cardstock. It is three and a half by six and a quarter inches. I added our white embossing folded background and then the three hinge hearts on top. For a sentiment, I used Thank You using the dies from the Mix and Match Sentiments die set that I showed you earlier. I had considered adding those foiled sentiments to the hearts above and below, but decided to leave it off. I feel like the shine of the hot foil adds enough interest to this card. I decided to go ahead and cut off the back of this. I originally was going to keep it a card and have those hinges on the front and I could write some fun things under the hinges, but I decided to just make this a panel and write all of my personal message underneath the hinges. You can do either way, whatever works for you. You could even stamp additional sentiments underneath each of the hearts. So here's a look at the completed card. Fits in a mini slimline envelope with no problem. And I just love how those hinged elements wiggle as soon as you open it. So the person will know to lift up those hearts to see what's behind it. So I'll write my personal sentiment behind each of those. And I just love how those hearts shine thanks to the foil. And because it wiggles, it catches the light even better. You could do these hinge elements with a variety of dies. You could do circles, squares, hearts, rectangles, any basic shape would work. And you could do a single large hinged element if you prefer. And that again is what I show in the video that I link here up on the top right. If you've never tried doing a hinged card design, I encourage you to do so. It's super fun. One of my favorite fun fold designs. All right, now it's time to create pocket cards. I'm first going to create a pocket card using a particular die set meant to create a pocket. However, after that, I'll show you how to create your own pocket without needing a specialty die. This is the card that we'll make first. I just love this die set. I used the heart element from it earlier, but now I'm using the entire die set to create this fun pocket card. I showed you this earlier, but I just thought I'd show you again all the pieces that come in the set. I'll be using all of them for this card. There is a die to create the pocket itself, a die to create the insert, and then layering dies. 
I die cut the decorative piece for the front of the pocket from Simon Says Stamp Fog cardstock, which is a light gray. And I'm putting on top of that some shimmer with my tonic shimmer pen. This will make this cardstock look sparkly. So it looks like a metallic cardstock, but really it's just a regular cardstock. This is a great way to create your own specialty cardstock. It is beautiful in real life. I'm gluing this onto the front of the pocket. Now I die cut the pocket from white cardstock and there are score lines that the die makes so that you have a flap along the sides and the bottom. So I'm just folding those flaps over. Before I assemble the rest, I'm adding the little decorative pieces to this. The die set does include the dies to make these decorative elements. And I just cut them out of different colors of scrap cardstock and did a little bit of layering also. I also created the heart with the die set. I cut it from white cardstock, then the decorative piece from the gray cardstock, glued those together, and now I'm adding some decorative elements to that also. I used the hello die cut that I used before. I used white cardstock and black cardstock, and I'm gluing that onto the heart. I also decided to add a sentiment strip underneath that on the pocket, and that is it from Simon Says Stamp. Now it's time to create the insert. There are dies included for this. So I cut the insert from white cardstock and then the die that's slightly smaller from peach cardstock to glue on top of it for a nice matte finish. Now I'm gluing the heart to the top of the insert by putting glue at that little V slot there and then pressing the bottom of the heart into this. Make sure you use something strong for this. You could also put a circle die cut up there or something else if you want to change the design. Now, if you wanted to, you could glue this pocket right under the front of an A2 card. And you can see that the insert will slide right into it, perfect size. But I thought it'd be more fun to make this not on a card, that the pocket is actually the card itself. I like that I have both options. Now, to make this a standalone pocket, I die cut another of the pocket die from white cardstock. And instead of scoring along the flaps, I'm cutting the flaps off. So I just have a regular solid piece. I then can glue our pocket onto this and it'll be a standalone pocket. I'm putting strong double-sided adhesive along those flaps and then I'll press the two pieces together. Again, stay tuned. I'll show you how to make a pocket like this on your own without needing the die set. But this one is particularly handy and I love that it has so many design elements that layer on it together. Now it does have a heart theme to it, but you could change the heart to be a flower at the top or a circle or something else if you wanted to. I personally use hearts a lot on my cards because they work for a variety of occasions. So here's the completed card. It fits into a regular A2 envelope. It has the pocket and the insert that pulls out. Other than that, there isn't like a card flap that opens. If you wanted to, you could put like a mini card on the back of the pocket, and that would also serve as an easel to hold it up for display. Here's a closer look at the detail. You can see the shimmer on the light gray cardstock, also the layered die cuts, and I added some Lucy's Cards pink pearls along the background for added shine. Now I promised I would show you how to make a pocket card on your own. I'm just going to do kind of a basic run through, not a completed card. Now, if you wanted to create one in similar size, you start with a piece of cardstock that is four and three quarters by three and three quarters. And I'm scoring a quarter inch from the two sides and the bottom. This is the way you create those little flaps that will form the side and the bottom of the pocket. Now, this will be a pocket for an A2 card once again, but you could change up the size to do other card sizes if you wanted. So there you can see the three score lines. I am now cutting the little corners off the bottom. This will just help it to fold and flatten nicely. You can see how easy it is to create a pocket on your own. You will also need a backing for your pocket. So I cut a piece of cardstock that is four and a quarter by three and a quarter inches. That's the same size as our pocket when those flaps are folded back. This time I decided to use liquid adhesive to add the flaps onto the backing, but you could use double-sided tape if you want. So now we have a standalone pocket. In this case, I made the back piece stick up a little bit on the top. I just like that finished look, but you could cut that off if you wanted to. Next, we need an insert piece. I cut one that is four by three and a quarter inches, and that slides in and out nicely. 
You can also die cut a little nook on the top of your pocket. You could use the bottom of a heart die, a circle die, whatever you want. And then glue that same die cut to the top of your insert so it slides in and out. There are many different ways you could do this, and I'll show you some in a future video if you're interested. So you can see how the designs are very similar. I just created my own on the right. Let me know if you want to see more pocket card ideas. I think it's fun and a great way to use your supplies creatively. Before we go, I did want to talk a little bit about the Spellbinders Clubs. I don't usually do this in videos, but I get a lot of questions. And I plan to use these more in the new year because of their value and that they include tools. So it's kind of like a kit that you subscribe to, but instead of being filled with like papers and accents, they are just tools. You get different tools each month, such as dies, uh, there's glimmer plates, there are stamp sets, and now there's an embossing folder too. You can subscribe and cancel anytime, and the price point is pretty low. They also have offers where if you sign up for more than one of the clubs, then you get deep discount. If you sign up for all of them, everything I just showed you, which is everything I used in this video and much more, it's only $100 a month, which is deeply discounted. Now, this is not for everyone. I just wanted to tell you because a lot of people ask about them because they're called clubs instead of like a kit subscription. There are many different kit subscriptions out there. Many of them are great, but this one is one that I have been using a lot more over the past year because of the value the design, the different themes, and their tools to be used again and again, such as dies, stamps, and so on. Just wanted to share that a little explanation. I will link to a video that talks more about this from Spellbinders if you want to see it. Just wanted to throw that out there. And please know that Spellbinders did not ask me to mention this. I just think they're a great company with great products. I enjoy using them. All right, if you're interested in any of these supplies, they are linked below in the YouTube description. I will also link at the end here to a couple other videos that you might be interested in. I really thank you for spending this time with me. I know my videos are long, but I sure hope that you learned a thing or two. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you again in another video.